Hello, I'm Roberto Levin. I will be presenting Chapter 7 in your textbook. Let's discuss theories and conceptual frameworks. Chapter 7 in Essentials of Nursing Research is Understanding Theoretical and Conceptual Frameworks. It specifically relates to the application to research. The chapter has four learning objectives to identify major characteristics and theories, conceptual models, and frameworks. Two, to identify several conceptual models or theories frequently used by nurse researchers. Three, to describe how theory and research are linked in quantitative and qualitative studies. And four, to appraise the appropriateness of a conceptual or theoretical we all know that there are theories commonly used in nursing. You have heard about them throughout your education. We also know that scientists produce theories. Think of theories as binding together a scale model and a theoretical hypothesis, so it reflects the real world. For our theory to be true, which is what we want, it must reflect the real world. While it is a speculation about the real world, it is our best effort at truth. Obviously, we want to know how the theory will be supported by the evidence. We then want data to decide whether the model we have fits the evidence we get through an experiment. A theory then is an abstract generalization that explains how phenomena are interrelated in the real world. Theory relates to the hypothesis, and now we know how. Conceptual models are abstractions that are assembled because of their relevance to a common theme. They provide a conceptual perspective on interrelated phenomena but are more loosely structured than the theories. One of the examples is the health promotion model, and you have an example of this in your textbook. I believe it is in, it is in part two, figure 7.1. What you will notice is that it is divided into individual characteristics and experiences, behavior-specific cognition and affect, and behavioral outcomes. So we know the beginning. We know the specific cognition and effect. And then we know what we're looking for in outcomes. I would recommend that you take a look at Pender's health promotion model in your textbook and walk through it as an example. I think it does a really good job of laying this out in a way that is common to nurses. And then of course we have frameworks and they are the conceptual underpinning of a study. In nursing, the conceptual models of nursing are made up of human beings, environment, health, and nursing. Most of these were conceptualized back in the 70s and 80s, and they pretty much locked in that for something to be a nursing theory, it, that it had to have these four elements. There are people that argued this point fairly effectively now, but currently this is still where things stand. This might be a more helpful representation that comes from nurses' labs, and it basically says the person is the recipient of nursing care and may include individuals, patients, groups, families, and communities. Nursing is the attributes, characteristics, and action of the nurse providing care on behalf of or in conjunction with the client. 
The environment or the situation is defined as the internal and external surroundings that affect the client. And health is defined as the degree of wellness or well-being that the client experiences. One of the things we know from different models, here are a few, is that different models describe person, health, nursing, and environment in different ways. All of these are nurse theorists. Take uh, Dorothea Orm, for example. She defines humans as men, women, and children cared for either singly or as social units and are the material object of nurses and others who provide direct care. This is an example of one of the, thing, the theories that some people now question because of the language of what we as nurses do for the person rather than the person being defined independently of a nurse. You can look through these examples and you will note that each one of them has a slight difference in the way they define each of these elements. We use a theory or a framework in research differently depending on whether we're doing qualitative or quantitative research. In qualitative and quantitative research, the approach impacts the ways in which the theory or the conceptual models are used. And, and for example, qualitative research is less likely than quantitative research to use pre-identified uh, pre theories. And there is a reason for this. Qualitative research frequently wants to take an in-depth look at something. And it wants to do so without preconceived ideas of what's going to be found. This is to say there is no dependent and independent variable as you would find in quantitative research. The result is that in quantitative research, you're more likely to use a theory like the health, to use something like the health promotion model or to use other theories uh, that are known to nurses. As a nurse researcher that looks at disaster nursing, I tend not to use many nursing theories because they don't fit well with what I do. But I do tend to use theories from other disciplines. And as nurses, it is fine for us to use the theories from other disciplines for our work. And finally, some guidelines for critically appraising theoretical and conceptual frameworks in, re in research. If you see box 7.1 in your textbook, these are spelled out in some detail. You will always want to look and see if the, if the report described a theoretical or conceptual framework. It is not uncommon in research papers not to see the theoretical or conceptual framework written. And this is because of the page limit or the word limit of a paper. This is usually, therefore, left out or is often left out. Did the research describe the major uh, features of the theory or model? It doesn't really do any good to put uh, your theoretical perspective or your model in if then you don't explain to people why it's there. You need to make sure that it is free of bias and, and you don't want the person to be chasing the theory and trying to make it fit. It should fit naturally. Which leads you to, is it the appropriate theory or model for the research problem? And then you want to know if the theory or model was used for generating a hypothesis or as an organizational or interpretive framework. 
I would suggest that in quantitative research, you're more likely to see it used for generating a hypothesis, where in qualitative research, it's more likely to be used as an interpretive framework. Where, were concepts defined in a way that is consistent with the theory? Which is to say, if you're using a theory and you define terms within your research, then those terms should be consistent with the theory you are using. And finally, did the researcher tie the study findings back to the framework? And that is always helpful, especially for trying to show that the framework is true and consistent with the real world.